Income Tax 2021-2022 Software Example Earned Income Tax Credit, the EIC, with no children involved. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Diving into Income Tax 2021-2022. Lacert Tax Software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but you might want to have access to the forms you can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point here, single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210. We've got no dependents that we're starting out with. The income at 11649, unusual number, but I'll explain it shortly. We have the 12550 standard deduction. That gets us taxable income of zero, so we don't have any taxable income. We can mirror that over here on the formula. We've got the 11649, the 12550, and then we have a negative taxable income, which obviously was stopped or capped at zero, not going below or floored at zero here. The tax calculated at zero because there was no taxable income, but we still have the earned income tax credit. And that kind of emphasizes the fact that the earned income tax credit is a refundable credit, meaning in this case, it's not acting as a refund, even though we have a basically a refund down here because it's not really a refund of money that we overpaid. It's acting as basically a benefit program in this instance. We can mirror that on our tax equation down below by putting another line for this item down here, our major two refundable credits. One was the CTC child tax credit. The other one's gonna be the earned income credit. Let's make another tab. I'm just going to call it the earned income credit. I'm not going to try to recalculate it because it's too complex. So I'm just for now, I'm just going to right click and format this. I'm going to make it currency brackets, put a none and then OK. And then I'm just going to basically rely on the software to do the calculation. So I'm going to just going to call it earned income credit. And then I'm just going to say software help me out with the calculation. And that's going to be the one one five oh two one five oh two and i'm going to pull that on over to the first page of the form 1040 in this line which is now picking up the child tax credit the payments and then i'm going to add to it this earned income tax credit at the 1502 at this point there's our 1502 so we're going to be focusing of course on the software here then now, if I go back to page one, the reason I use this unusual income to start with is because we're focusing on the earned income tax credit when uh, we have zero qualifying children. And the questions people will ask, and I'll, tr I'll do a different presentation based on zero qualifying children, one, two, and, th and then three and above, is going to be, well, when do I lose the credit? That's often what you get when you look it up on the IRS website, how, how much income can I have before the credit goes away? But you also want to know how high can my income be to maximize the credit, right? So in other words, if you look at a worksheet that you usually find on the IRS website, they're going to say, okay, if you have zero qualifying children and you're not married, basically, your income can go as high as 21430 before you lose the credit entirely. But you also want to know when does my credit get maximized at maximizing it if you had no children would be a maximum credit of 1502 three or more children, the maximum would be 6,728. So we're trying to max, the max with no children is up here, 1,502. So how high can my income be to max it at 1,502? And the way we can look at that, we can look at the tables over here. These are the calculation tables for the earned income tax credit. And you could say, okay, how can I max this thing out if I was gonna make the perfect amount of income? Uh, I could go down here and say, okay, here's here's from the 9,800. I max it out here with zero. So I can I can earn anywhere from 9,800 down to, or up to about the 11,650 and still be maxing out the credit with no children at the 1,502. So that's like the first thing that people might, you know, have in mind there. So this is kind of the maximum I can have to get the full credit. If I go $1 over that, you can see it starts to go back down. So it's a curve. You can think about it as a curve uh, with relation to your earned income level. So it's at the 1,502. If I made my income go up, wages go up to the 50 here, $1 more, $1 more, and the credit starts to go back down again. So that's, that's typically what people want to know, right? They want to know what, what, when do you lose the credit entirely and what's that curve look like uh, and where does it kind of peak off and then go back down? 
So in other words, if I if I continue to go up now from this point, I could follow this I could follow this chart over here and say, okay, if I continued to increase it, you can see that the amount of the credit will go down after I've hit that peak, right? After I've hit that peak, it'll start going back down. So if I made if I made 12,000, I'm going to go back on over and say now it's going down. If I made 13,000, 13,000 on the wages, it starts to go down. If I made 14,000, it's going down. If I made 15,000, and we could do this all the way till we get to 21,430. So now it's going down. So even though 21,430 is the highest amount, let's go to 17,000. The, the amount of the credit is going way down with the income level, right? So if I go to 20,000, you can say, yeah, I still get the credit, but it's not doing too much there, right? And if I go above, if I go above 21,430, 21,440, then the credit is gone entirely. So, and I can go the other way, right? If I go from zero up and say, let's say I didn't have, let's say I only had like a thousand dollars of income, then the credit is low again and the credit will increase until we until we get to the the starting point of the nine nine eight which is where it will cap out so if i was to increase this up and say okay what if it was what if it was three thousand dollars we're going to say then it goes up what if it's four thousand dollars then it's going to go up what if it's what if it's seven thousand dollars We've got an increase to the credit amount. What if it's $8,000? We've got an increase in the credit of the 12228, uh, and it maxes out around that 9,000. The $9,000 was it? No, around 10,000. Around 10,000. It maxes out at the 10,000, and then again, it stays flat until you get to until you get to the 11649 so 11649 where we started at 11649 and it still stays flat at that peak and then it goes back down so that's the general idea of the curve now the other kind of funny thing is you might be able to use 2019 income so let's say my income let's say my income for 2020 was was something low like like 5000 5,000 here, so that would be a low credit. But then I'm gonna say, but my 2019 income, if they let me use that, which they do, you can't use, use you gotta go back two years. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna to elect to use 2019. If I look at the earned income then, and it says not including taxable, uh, earned income, not including non-tax combat pay, I'm gonna say it's 10,000. Then if I go back on over, now it's it's making the calculation based on 2019 earnings even though my 2021 earnings are lower so that's a that's a situation where for that particular calculation i would be at better off with my income level being higher now again it goes it goes over the curve so obviously if my income was too high in 2019 I'm, it's going to go back down i'm going to start to go back down so you would only want to do that if basically your income was low in 2021, making a lower earned income credit, and then you wanted to increase it uh, by, by using 2019 if it happened to be higher and still allow you for the credit. So you've got to choose the better of the two numbers. You could test them both out. The other unusual thing you might have is combat pay for people in the military. So for example, if I go, if I go back on over and say that we have a W-2 of 5,000, and then we had another W-2, which was showing combat pay uh, that was not, was not included on the W-2 here, but in line Q. So it usually would be in box 12 of the W-2 for a military member, and it would have, I believe, a Q. And that would then that would then be indicate another six thousand. Now that's a benefit to the military member because it's not included in income here. See, we only have the five thousand. That's why that's why it's a benefit. But it could be beneficial to include it for the calculation of the earned income tax credit, which is only being calculated on the five thousand. So I could, in that instance, add 
the combat pay to, to the calculation. So I'm going to say add the combat pay. And then now it's up to that to that 1502. And you can see that we added the combat pay here. And then on page on page one, we still only have the 5000 not including the combat pay here. So you kind of get the best of both worlds in that instance. Now, if I go back, if I if I delete that, I'm going to go back on over and remove the combat pay. And then if I go to that takes us back to here. Now, if I jump to the 2019, if I had combat pay in 2019, I would have to enter that on the two lines. So if it was like 2019, I had 5000 and then combat pay of another 6000 then and I want to elect to use 2019 numbers, then I can go back on over and now it's showing me those are the numbers that are being used to basically calculate the credit for the 2019 numbers. So the combat pay need to take that into consideration as well. Now, the other thing that can kind of mess things up is if there's a lot of interest income, which isn't usually the case if you're talking about a low income individual. But if you're if you're like investment income here was over 10,000, that could be a problem for the earned income tax credit. So if I went into income and I had interest, for example, of let's say twelve thousand dollars that would indicate that i have a lot of money like in the bank or in some types of investments that are generating revenue and could be a problem then for the calculation of the earned income tax credit right that's another kind of restriction that would be common so now let's go to a situation where they get married so now we're just looking at the next table over here same question is you know where am i going to max out the the credit if we were married and also just realize that it's a little bit funny with this credit because because it could you could think that it might be disincentivizing marriage in some cases because you could lose the credit in some cases so obviously for example if we were talking about adam here that uh, that was unmarried and then single filing getting a credit that was maximized out i maximized it out again at the 1502 and then they got married and they have the combined income that was over the threshold for married filing joint, which isn't twice, you know, the, the single threshold. See, if it was 21, uh, 430, they'd only have to get up to 27, 380 uh, as married, basically, to, to lose the credit. So if they got married, and let's say the other person, the, the spouse earns 15, 751, and then I go back on over to the forms then we're going to say okay so now on page two that we don't have any credit that's going to be there because they're above the threshold for the married which is 27 380 and you can imagine even if they were in the exact kind of same situation basically if they were if they were got married and they both earned that what we had before the 11 649 which means they would have maxed out the credit on both of them and we go back on over then they only get a credit of uh, the 628 when married, when when they were both single and they were exactly identical situations, they both got the credit of 1502, you would think times times two. So it would be $3,000 credit that goes down. So you could see that, that this credit is designed to help out or, or be beneficial when people are, are, their income goes up and not lose the incentive as their income goes up to work. But that with the marriage involved, it gets kind of complex because you can actually disincentivize marriage in some cases, you would think, which would be, you know, that would, doesn't seem like a desirable outcome. But in any case, we got the same questions. How do we maximize, how can we maximize when married? So, so usually they'll tell you when you lose the credit entirely. But if I go to the married column on the table over here and we've got, we've got no children involved, then we could still have the income where it was at at the where was it before all the way up here at the uh, 9850 so i can go back on over and say okay if it was at if it was as low as let's say 9800 i'm so i'm going to go back on over and just put it in one so let's say it was 9800 9800 and go back on over and say there's the 1502 so we've maximized it out and then of course we have a bigger breadth that we can then go through uh, because a longer uh, time frame so I can go as high to keep it at that max all the way down here to the 17.6 to keep it at that 1502. So if I if I income goes up, doesn't matter which one earns it, I don't believe 1706. Is that what I said? It's a 17.6, 17, 
17599. 17599. So there's the cap. There's your cap on your income cap for the married filing joint to max out if there was no children involved. We'll put children in there later. And so there it is. And then you have the same thing if you go up above that and then it, it, we lose it altogether at the 27380. So you can imagine, okay, now I've hit the key, the top of the curve. So what if I made uh, 19,000 between the two of us? Then it goes down. What if we made 20,000? We made 20,000. Well, then it's going to go down. What if we made then 20, let's say 23,000 between the two of us? Then it's going to be going down. What if we made 24,000? Well, then it's going to go down. What if I made 26,000 between the two of us? Well, then it goes down. And what if we made then on, uh, over 27,380 or 24, 27,4? Then it goes away. And then, of course, we can go the other way as well. So we said the cap happened at, you know, the bottom line of, of the maxing of, of this cap is down here at the 9 thousand eight hundred so nine thousand eight hundred nine eight brings us back to the maximized area one thousand five and if we make less than that what if we made seven thousand between the two of us then it goes down what if we made six thousand between the two of us then it goes down what if we made five thousand between the two of us then it goes down what if we made 4,000 between the two of us? Then it goes down. What if we made, what if we made 3,000? 3,000 between the two of us, it goes down. What if it's at 2,000? 2,000? It's, does it, does it ever go to zero? What if I made 1,000? It's pretty low. It still gives me something. But if I don't have any here, then of course, we shouldn't have any earned income tax credit. So you can see it's a curve that kind of peaks out and you get like a longer peak period when married. But you can see, again, it doesn't double the it doesn't double the the salaries like you would think if you had two people in the exact same circumstance with income levels with no children and they got married. You would think that this number would kind of double to not distance. And that's not kind of what happens. I kind of get it, you know, because they're trying to. But. Yeah, you know that so that's how it is so we'll do the same thing with one two and three in future presentations